Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. I want to introduce to some and present to others not only a whistleblower who has gotten it right, but someone who is more of an advocate for you than many people who swear on an oath uh, at Capitol Hill. He's none other than Michael J. Daugherty. He is the founder of the Justice Society and also author of a tremendous book that needs to be on your shelf and in your kids' hands. Your children have got to read this. The Devil Inside the Beltway, Michael J. Daugherty. It's a tremendous honor to have you here tonight, sir. <clears throat> you are an amazing man. Uh, and the message that you're giving us is not to be so naive as to be deceived by our government uh, and to be not, no, not so adversarial that we do not uphold the Constitution. You are not only the president of a lab, uh, but you're also a fighter for justice in America. How did you get motivated, uh, first and foremost, to become a whistleblower? I think I was born that way. I mean, I grew up in Detroit and I, you know, was eight and nine during the riots and I was raised by two Detroit police officers. So I just, I think, you know, wh whatever your childhood is, you think that's what normal is. And then, and so I had this like, you know, justice and, you know, you know, and there is justice and you should do the right thing. And I think it was just, a, you know, my, my parents and family live that. and. So I, I just, and then I, you know, and then I did, yeah, I did start, you know, with nothing and built my company and got into medicine. And I did have that dream and I knew what people could carve out. And then the government just came down on me and it was shocking about how they came down on me. It was so unbelievably corrupt, so unbelievably patronizing, arrogant, unaccountable, smug, and we're diagnosing cancer. I mean, to be a, I mean, there's no one that doesn't think what we do is important. I mean, you know, what you do is important. And, you know, the janitor should feel like they're doing God's work. But, you know, we really are clearly directly helping the citizens of this country with a massive health issue. And that didn't phase them one bit. And that was shocking. Uh, and so I wrote about that and, uh, you know, I did, uh, I told it like a narrative and what's amazing is truth to power gets people's attention and yeah. truth to power also gets people that want to cover you up to cover you up. And, um, it's been quite an adventure. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's been a fight. <laughs> you are doing godly work. You are attempting to make certain that cancer patients get the treatments and laboratory services that they need uh, to overcome the ailments, their diseases. What was the trigger that made the U.S. government decide to come out to Michael Daugherty? Well, that was a creep up. The first thing that happened was is we had someone call us up and say they found our file of 9,000 patients out in cyberspace, 2008. Wow. He tried to extort us to pay him to fix it. And since he wouldn't give us any information about who he was or how he operated, I thought he was a con and a crook, so I wouldn't pay him. I knew he was a con and a crook. I couldn't prove he was a con and a crook, but I felt in my intuition and experience he was. that not, <laughs> Legally, I couldn't prove anything. So I let it go. We've had no, no issues. And then in his revenge, he called the government to call me and start investigating me. Now, I've worked with the feds long enough to know that when you call their hotline and complain, they throw that in the wastebasket. So if this guy actually called the government to investigate me and they did, they had a prior relationship. Ah. And so then I went through an unbelievable experience with all I knew, I had no idea the rights we do not have and how no one will come to your rescue. And so I was so stunned by that, I had to write the book, The Devil Inside the Beltway, because it was like, if I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down informing other people. And so what made me do it was the moment they came at me. I mean, I looked in the devil's eyes and there was nothing there. I mean, these people are really terrifying. 
because okay. they have every like these protesters in the streets like like the irony of the white liberal protester throwing bricks into the black small business owners business and destroying it and screaming black lives matter exactly <laughs> That's the same irony of the government people destroying a cancer detection center saying we're going to help the public you know it is it is and this is this is not new exactly. what's new is that people are getting fed up and you're hearing stories what's new is you're seeing it that's what's new but it's not new you know there are those who speak of general flynn and how he was railroaded by the federal bureau of investigation and and as well the department of justice under the last administration and if i if i could get you to speak to the fact of the power of the u.s government that they have seemingly an unlimited arsenal of lawyers and other resources that literally tear at you day and night to get you to surrender. Am I correct about that? Well, they do, but the most powerful thing is the fact that we have a populace that's asleep and a media that is not gonna save anybody. Wow. And that's like being out in the playground with a bully when the teacher's missing and everyone else is gone. And, and cowards and bullies pummel you when no one else is looking. No one else is looking because the media won't tell you and the public doesn't know. And that's the biggest power they have is that they can, they'll look you in the face. And I call it the Eric Holder School of Law, which is, yeah, we're gonna ruin you. We're gonna make stuff up. We're gonna go after your family. We're gonna kill your reputation. And you can't survive that. You can't survive it. Exactly. So just sign on the dotted line and we won't hurt your son. Now, the thing is, that is exactly what happened to Michael Flynn. And they made him and induced him to lie with a gun to his head. Lie and break the law or I'm gonna hurt your son. And then you've got this judiciary nutbag named Sullivan who refuses to deal with that reality. There's your swamp. Okay, that's what goes on. Now, does that happen the first time and only to Flynn? No. And so what I often say is, look, crooks and thieves are crooks and thieves and they never get caught the first time they're a crook and a thief. The FBI has been pulling this crap for decades. And so have been a lot of people atop a lot of agencies, both parties. Okay, because yes. the swamp is not partisan. The swamp is an insider and we are outsiders. But what's breaking is the fact that Obama weaponized them to such a stirred up frenzy that they got arrogant, entitled, and sloppy. And those moles, many of which are still in the administration, had the gall to walk in to the White House and pull that stuff. Yeah. Now. You personally have experienced it. You are a whistleblower. You have been righted over the years. There are some people who are sitting here listening to this interview and watching this interview and saying, well, there's still good people in Washington. See, they'll help you eventually. Is that true? No, there are good people in Washington and they're cowards. It, it's called uh, the, the Sopranos go to Washington. It's duplicity. Yes and fear. So look, I see something bad. Look, see, Washington people don't have a factory or a skill or a job. They're politicians. They don't create anything, okay? So their foundation of security is their relationships and their network. So you learn to survive in that over the years to just look the other way. So most of them are perfectly good people that are cowardly and want to take care of their families and they'll look the other way. Because you never know, today's corrupt crook is your boss tomorrow. Yes. And so this is why, you know, it's kind of like if you saw the cartoon with the, the coyote and the uh, road runner and you know, they fight all day long and then they punch out and go have drinks. Yes. And so in, in DC, it is a game. It is theater. It is the victims are not seen. The people that they save are a figment of their imagination. The accountability and results do not exist. 
So are there good people? I'm not going to call them bad people, but I will call them complicit and ha bloodied hand. No one wants to be the one who states this is my enemy uh, because eventually that enemy becomes your boss and it can get very ugly. Uh, and, and in the sense of what's happening in Washington, and, and if you can speak to this because I've criticized a lot of Americans for this. Uh, they say we voted in Donald Trump and Donald Trump will clean up the swamp, the entire swamp. I want to ask your opinion. Is that naivety on the part of the American citizenry that one man can clean up the entire swamp? Yeah, it's called lazy. The reason we Thank have you. the swamp is they think someone can save them. This is all about the fact that we don't have a civics book that's been honest. The civics book that we're taught is 19th century government. The government changed in 2004, uh, 1914 with Woodrow Wilson and the building and the beginning of the bureaucracy and the agencies. And it morphed and it got a big boost from FDR. And by the time we're in the mid 20th century, it started to really run. And it became a political weapon. And, and there was a huge detachment. And that's never, ever, ever in a civics book. And if, if today's political reality was in a civics book, it would have to be an adult class over 18. Because the violence and yeah. the killing, is the, they've never led it in a junior high school. We don't know. And that keeps us dumb and partisan. And it keeps us lazy. If we think Donald Trump can clean that up, it's a century of corruption no single person can, can, the public has got to understand. And it's not their fault, we're kept stupid. Yes. I would have never known this had I not experienced this myself. And the reason I wrote the book like a novel is because I want the public to experience it. And when we go into story, we tend to experience it ourselves. And so it is, it's part laziness, part complicity, but all, a lot of it is just intentionally keeping us ignorant. Our educate. I mean, even when we all had civics, that was theater. I mean, I've said the civics books, the civics books that we're all taught of, should be right in between the Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> because it's just not true, exactly. and we never learn it's not true unless we experience it ourselves, and almost everyone doesn't experience it themselves, I, and I that's why ask, I your face. I, I want to ask you here because corruption eventually corrupts absolutely and right. it trickles down from the highest levels of our society to even the lowest levels of our society and so we turn the page to Seattle Washington where an insurrection is actually happening in America literally anarchists have taken over the city, six city blocks, including the the police precinct, and they are holding those particular areas under their authority. It's called an autonomous zone. I want to ask you, because a lot of people think that that happened merely because of the fervor of Black Lives Matter and Antifa, and people, young people, are just excited. Is that the case, or is there a backstory to this that allows those types of rebel forces to take over city blocks? Well, uh, what it is is Black Lives Matter is a brilliant, brilliant marketing term to bamboozle lazy, entitled young white liberals mm -hmm. who have never felt pain in years. I mean, you look at that zone. I mean, how many African Americans are there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you no, know, I, I don't. It's 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 not there. And and so and 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 the bigger thing is, so you're you. So here's who doesn't matter. Business owners don't matter. Property payers don't matter. Common citizens don't matter. Black citizens in Seattle don't matter. Don't matter, they're being exploited. Who's being exploited more than anyone? We are taking the topic of racism and black lives and we're making it lipstick on a pig. And we're bowing down to these spoiled nut jobs so that they have 
so now there goes police protection. I mean, ask ask at least half the. First of all, you know this makes me insane. By the way, I, I get really worked up with this because I grew up in Detroit and I've seen this happen. I'm like, yes. who loses? Blacks lose. I mean, you and it's the human condition, not the racial condition. You've got Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton showing up to gin up more money for themselves. And this just shows that's the tragedy of it all, is that when when CNN and MSNBC decide there's nothing left to show here so they can gin up ratings and make money and pat themselves on the back, they're going to leave. And, this, yeah. and the police are not going to want to work there anymore. And the, 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 the business people are going to go someplace else. And these obnoxious, smug, white liberal children who never felt pain are going to run back have a place to home and have a car and a mom. You know, and it is insanity. And what do you have? The mayor going, oh, I don't see anything. And the governor, I don't know about that. And why is that? Because that's their constituents. They'll sell you down the river for your vote. And, wow. and, and it's the media that's blowing it up. And who else other than young people that have no life experience are vulnerable to that narrative? Because you know, I have, gosh, I can't tell how many black people I know go, oh Lord, <laughs> here comes the white liberals and their racism thing again, like they know. I mean, how arrogant. It's obnoxious. It's exactly. like- Exactly. I mean, it you know, I, Condoleezza Rice always says, you don't have to tell me how to be black. And I love that. But it's like these white people going, you don't have to tell me how to be black. I'm like, you, as you burn everything. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> exactly. I mean, they're just, look at Detroit. I grew up in Detroit. I'm like, once you were born in the 70s, you weren't allowed to go downtown. You know, it took 40 years to bring it back. So what happens? Everyone abandons the blacks and it goes into anarchy because, gosh, there's corruption in power, even if you're black. So the black mayor's corrupt. I mean, it was just a nightmare. Detroit was a nightmare. And evidently, they all want to repeat it everywhere. Exactly. Detroit, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., New York City, all the same story, all the same narrative. Every time white liberals come for salvation, the deliverance never comes for black people. It's obvious. It's, it's, it's true. It's always white liberals that have like these backgrounds of spoon feeding BS. You just want to smack them. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Doherty, I, I thank you for indulging me this evening uh, for staying a little bit longer with us, but I, I got to ask you here. Donald Trump says in an interview with Fox, if the governor doesn't do something, he will. Is that a mistake on his part? Should we allow Seattle to crash as Detroit, as Baltimore, Washington, Atlanta, all these other cities? It's a sense of timing. He's politically brilliant and he'll say things versus do things. I think if he actually did something, it would be another potential uh, Floyd photo opportunity for the shameless media. However, already they're imploding on their own. They look like idiots. <laughs> Is there a problem going into Washington State for him? Well, he's never going to get an electorate vote from there anyway. His base isn't going to leave him. Uh, you know, the middle people are watching this insanity. Uh, I don't think he needs to. Uh, but the fact that he said it is great. He's not stupid. Remember, let's go all the way back to when he was in transition and that weekend that he put out the tweet that he's being spied on. And remember how everyone belly laughed? Exactly. And I was on a ton of media and kept and people were saying, what do you think? And I said, I think it'd be crazy except for one thing. He's not stupid. He is not gonna say crazy if it isn't true. He won't. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not we're not electing the Pope. This was this is not a likability contest. The guy you might hate his guts and think he's boorish and rude, but you'll never say he's dumb. Exactly. And he loves he's a street New Yorker. He loves this stuff. So he just loves messing with him, gets her up, and I, I'm just like, you know, he just needs to sit back and just watch these fools. Exactly. The the unfortunate thing is that families are gonna be lost individuals lost in this because of the push for defunding the police. If I could get your 
final quote on this because you understand government. You know that police can be corrupt. We understand as well that there are a few bad apples in every profession. But when a government defunds its public enforcement arm, what does that say about the rest of the government? Well, okay, first of all, I, I mean, yes, I come from a law enforcement family, and I'll tell you right now, it's like, it's an underpaid job where bullets fly past your head, so I'm sorry, teachers, quit whining. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's ridiculous, and, 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 and it is a thankless, stressful job, so nothing pisses me off more than people that start acting like authority figures that wouldn't have the balls to walk in other people's shoes, let alone do, and so it's so cliché. Uh, you know, and so I don't even like to go, yeah, okay, they, I'm, listen, I've had bad encounters with police officers and I get furious at them and I report them, don't get me wrong, but you can't take this photo op that gets exploited and paint it on everybody. You can't because the numbers don't hold up, but no one will report the numbers. There's just not that much death that happens at the hand of police officers in this country. Exactly. You know, and then, and then abuse, it's like, okay, look, you know, <laughs> you can take any type of crap that police take and you can read chapter five and you miss chapter one through four and you can have a totally different opinion. That's why we have juries and trials and we don't do this mob mentality guilt trip. Yep. You know, Candace Owens point about how, okay, but Floyd was no saint folks at all. Mm -hmm. So we have to quit, you know, we have to, quit the froth, quit the exploitation. You know, this is way past that. We just, now we're at the damn fool stage of the game. And, it, and it, it's a damn fool that's gonna sit here and go, oh, let's, let's solve racism by taking away protection. Do you know what, I mean, it's insane. Like, like, like the Atlanta police force is like lily white people. <laughs> it's ridiculous, I mean, there, there's at least at least half black at least so exactly. i guess it let's just get rid of oh i see if you're if you're an african-american police officer in a major city you're an uncle tom is that what that is i mean there's no logic here exactly and, and i feel those guys they're, what they're, it's so bad for them it's so ridiculous and it's so thankless anyway so i'm like be careful what you wish for you know i mean how stupid are we that we're going to let these people get rid of these police officers. They're not buying million dollar mansions. They don't need this crap, exactly. you know, to have some drunk, entitled, stupid idiot who's usually messed up on drugs, who's frothing around like a three-year-old, actually have a hand in taking away your job or ability to defend yourself. Have a nice day. Exactly. Michael Darty, a bestseller author amongst us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You have got to get the book, The Devil Inside the Beltway. It is a story that reveals how corrupt and abusive our government really is. And if you are naive to think that one man was sent to Washington to clean all of this up, you, my friend, are as foolish as the blacks who are waiting for the deliverance that comes from white liberals. That's how <laughs> foolish you are. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I greatly appreciate you coming on tonight. I want you to come back again so that we can talk about a lot of things, including the coronavirus situation uh, and the abuse that small business owners are taking uh, around the country from the CDC and other agencies. Michael Doherty, thank you so much, and God bless you for coming on tonight. All right, thanks for having me, man. Take All care. Right. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with more of the best in urban conservative talk right after these messages.